Siyempre, kailangan di magmawalan ng pera yung recruiter. Ma magaling magsuot ng mga damit. Nabenta na po pala nila ako dun. Sa tinutuloyan namin, kinakabahan po. Kung parang mga kaba ko po nang hihinig. Fourteen years after the enactment of the Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995 or RA 8042, the problems confronting overseas Filipino workers remain the same and are even getting worse. At least 41 OFWs in different parts of the globe stand to suffer the fate of Flor Contemplacion, Sara Balabagan, and many other untold stories of unjust treatment which are not clearly addressed by the authorities. This is Almalin Santos, The Red Cross Untold Stories. One of the concerns of the Philippine National Red Cross through the Social Services Department is to address the plight of the OFWs by providing welfare services to them and to their families through responsive and sustainable programs and a system of fully coordinated activities with all concerned national and foreign agencies and institutions. Yung mga uh, nagtatabaho ng mga overseas worker na hindi naman sila national ng isang bansa and then they have to go to another country to earn a living. So yan yung mga migrant workers. So there is population movement na kailangan pumunta sila sa ibang bansa para magkaroon ng income at mabuhay ang kanilang pamilya. And then when they go to places na hindi naman sila national noon, nakakaroon ng vulnerability. Uh, they, uh, sometimes they go to places na they cannot defend themselves. Isa nakakaroon ng mga uh, contract violations. At nakakaroon din ng, they, we, nakakaroon ng communication gap between parties. Kasi nakakaroon ng disintegration because of the distance. Filipinos will continue to live for jobs abroad unless the unemployment problem in the country is addressed. Hoping for a decent job, Jane, Sandra, Linda, and Tess, not their real names, left the country and tried their fate in Thailand. They left their families in Cotabato City as their recruiter promised them that high-paying jobs await them. They paid huge amount of money in exchange for promised jobs. Their hopes turned into a nightmare, knowing that there were no jobs waiting for them in Bahrain. Realization suddenly thumped to their faces that they were illegally recruited. And worse, the plane tickets given to them by their recruiter were fake. The four OFWs were stranded at the Bangkok airport because they have no plane tickets off to Bahrain. The victims suffered hunger and cold weather for several days and spent the holidays in a foreign country sleeping in airport parking lot. Three days after, they were brought to the Philippine Embassy in Bangkok. They then decided to seek help from the PNRC so they could come back home. They were just happy to learn that the PNRC will assist them in going back to the country. The PNRC assisted them and assured that the agency will back them up in their fight against illegitimate recruiter system. Through the help of PNRC Chairman, Senator Richard Gordon, they were given plane tickets from Bangkok to Manila. They arrived in Manila on January 6 via Cebu Pacific. Kailangan alagaan natin ang nang talaga itong mga tao to bago pa umalis titingnan lahat ng papeles dito pa lang sa airport na kung talaga meron talaga papeles na meron permiso sa sa overseas uh, employment at para sigurado hindi magkakagawa niya What Abby, Rose, and Mary experience as OFWs is one of the worst memories that they do not want to reminisce. 
the three, without a second thought, left their families to work in Ivory Coast, Africa, as promised that they will be earning huge amount of money, which they cannot earn working in the Philippines. In dire need of money to support their family, the three decided to work abroad. But like many other OFWs, they became victims of illegal recruitment. These Filipinas started to quound their recruiters as their passports were confiscated in the airport. Instead of working as a cashier, they were forced to work as sex slaves in a nightclub. Every time that these Filipinas refused to work, they were being maltreated, locking them inside a room without food and water. PNRC coordinated with the Department of Foreign Affairs to immediately rescue the OFWs and sent requests to the Philippine Embassy in Abuja for the immediate repatriation of the OFWs. Hearing a grievance from the family of the OFWs, Chairman Gordon sought assistance to the Red Cross Society of Ivory Coast to assess the situation and help the OFWs. Immediately, the Red Cross rescued the OFWs. After a request sent to the Philippine Embassy in Abuja for the repatriation of the OFWs. Through the continuous effort of the PNRC, Red Cross Society of Ivory Coast and DFA, the OFWs were successfully rescued on April 15. Onboard flight EK334 from Dubai, Filipinas Abby, Rose, and Marie arrived in Nino Yaquino International Airport in Manila around 2 in the morning. PNRC team composed of medics and social workers immediately gave them assistance. The PNRC social workers conducted critical incidents stress debriefing to avoid post-traumatic stress disorder and rendered necessary medical assistance to the OFWs. The PNRC social services contacted their relatives for them to return to their respective homes the soonest possible time. Now, Abby, Rose, and Marie, despite the small amount that they were earning in the Philippines, are living a normal life with their family. For the year 2008, the social services assisted a total of 412 OFWs. The PNRC has never left the side of our unsung heroes. As part of the continuous co commitment of the organization to alleviate human suffering, PNRC will continue to lend helping hands to the unsung heroes of today. The Overseas Filipino Workers And every decision that I've ever made Time to pick up all the pieces My future is in my